What is going on, IF Warriors? So today we're going to talk about a new study that released in August of 2022 called The Effectiveness of Early Time Restricted Eating for Weight Loss, Fat Loss, and Cardiometabolic Health in Adults with Obesity. It was a randomized clinical control trial. It was run by Humaira Jamshed and colleagues and looked at the results of intermittent fasting with the early time restricted eating, so eating earlier rather than later, as compared for the control group who simply ate 12 or more hours for weight loss and body fat. Now this was an important study because it was one of the largest clinical control randomized studies with over 90 adults and their ages ranged from 25 years to 75 years. Now the participants were obese, but did not really carry any underlining diseases. All participants received weight loss treatment, which was energy restriction, and were randomized to the early time restricted eating, an eight hour eating window from seven in the morning all the way until around 5 p.m or the control eating group that had an eating window of 12 hours or more. What ended up happening? Well, the weight loss was significantly reduced in the early time restricted eating group. The early time restricted eating intervention group was more effective for losing weight by minus 2.3 kilograms. So the difference being minus 3.7 kilograms for the early time restricted eating group and minus 0.9 kilograms for the control group. When it came to body fat, they lost more body fat as well. Minus 1.4 kilograms, which was minus 2.9 kilograms to 0.2 kilograms. The ratio of fat loss was greater as well, minus 4.2% which was minus 14.9% to 6.5%. Now keep in mind for both the body fat reduction and the overall fat loss ratio, it was not a p-value lower than 0.05. So the variance doesn't allow for this to be automatically the case because of the intervention. However, the weight loss of minus 2.3 kilograms was a p-value much lower than 0.05, which made it statistically significant that because the control uh, took place with the intervention, that this was more than likely possible only because of this study, because their p-value was 0.002. There was also an additional benefit that came out of it, the early time restricted eating intervention group also improved diastolic blood pressure minus four millimeters hg hemoglobin so it's minus eight to zero to zero meaning there was no changes positive or negative to the control group with a p-value of less than 0.05 with a p-value of 0.04, making it statistically significant. Mood and disturbances, including fatigue, inertia, vigor, activity, and depression, dejection. All other cardiometabolic risk factors, food intake, physical activity, and sleep outcomes were similar between groups. Were similar. Cardiometabolic risk factors, food intake, and physical activity were similar and even their sleep outcomes were similar across all of the groups in secondary analysis of 59 completers early time restrictive eating was also more effective for losing body fat and trunk fat than the control study so trunk fat being the belly fat so keep in mind, there were 90 participants, but because of certain elements, some uh, dealing with uh, the, the pandemic, other elements dealing with people just dropping out, uh, it ended up being that 59 people completed the study. The study lasted for a period of 14 weeks, but what makes this impressive is that this is a randomized control trial with a control group and an intervention group with similar physical activity and food intake while also being one of the most packed 
studies in terms of human subjects and that is incredibly important. A previous study that was similar to this one, but was much less rigorous and was much less controlled, showed that intermittent fasting was not beneficial. In a similar scenario, this study almost debunks that study because it's much more controlled, much deeper, has a much higher subject number, and has things like food intake and physical activity measured to a similar level. So this, is a much, much, much better design. And the results are showing that early time restricted feeding comes out on top. Now, as I mentioned, the researchers still feel that more studies are needed to be able to definitively say uh, so this one way or the other. Um, I do believe that there are so many benefits to intermittent fasting that come from the fact that you are uh, not allowing yourself to eat after a certain time period because what, what ends up happening is you just automatically eat less. You just do because you don't have as much time to keep eating. You're not grazing, which is adding to your calorie intake throughout the day. But this is showing that even with those things being very similar, that there is a positive benefit that leans towards the intermittent fasting group, or at least the early time restricted feeding group. And remember, early time restricted feeding simply means that you are eating your food in the morning or earlier up until around four or five o'clock from around seven o'clock to around five o'clock or eight o'clock to around four o'clock, either one just around that time frame. This is a really cool study. Of course, most gurus out there are not going to talk about early time restricted feeding, especially with this study, because it goes against their anti-intermittent fasting plight. They'll definitely talk about the previous study um, as they did, but when this study comes out with a better control, a better design, a better rigor, and better with the similarities in food intake and physical activity, it just doesn't go with what they want to tell their audience about intermittent fasting not being that big of a deal, uh, bare minimum. So. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. And of course, you're still going to keep getting that intermittent fasting information right here on Fledge Fitness. I'll see you guys.